Good afternoon, this is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. And uh, what we wanted to do today was our last shoot of the series of knots that we've been doing. But we've covered a lot of knots for a lot of different uses. And again, check with books or professionals on knots before you use these to find out the proper applications. I've given you just a few applications, not definitely all of them for sure. So you want to be sure you're using the right knot for the right application that you don't get yourself in trouble. Today we want to cover two final knots and these are basically knots to hitch on to a stick, to hitch lashings or something like that, to close up bags. They're called the clove hitch and the constrictor knot. And so we're going to get to work showing you those knots and I also have a bonus knot for you at the end of this video. The first knot that we're going to do is what's called a clove hitch. Clove hitches are generally to attach a line to a stick to start a lashing or to uh, attach a line to some kind of a pole for a uh, semi-quick release knot for stabilizing. For example, maybe you'd use a, uh, a boat that was tied to a dock for a few minutes. You could use a clove hitch. And uh, what you do to make a clove hitch, there are two ways to make it. The simple way is if you have a, a free end of your post, what you simply do is to throw a loop into your cordage. Now my standing end is out here. My tag end is back here. You see the loop went with the standing end over the tag. Throw another one exactly the same. So now we have two loops and you can see that the standing end goes over the tag end on both. Then what you simply do, and it's pretty obvious when you're doing this, if I put these together this way it's going to slip. I want to put them together backwards so there's actually a little pressure on them. And once that I put those loops together, I can just put them over my cord, over my uh, log, my stick, whatever, and tighten it down. And that makes basically two half hitches that are thrown together backwards. And that's exactly what it is, two half hitches thrown together backwards. Again, this is an excellent knot to use if you're starting lashings on a rope or a, on a uh, two sticks. Now let me show you how to tie this on the stick. Suppose that I don't have these ends free, they're attached to a pole. What I can do is simply take my tag end, I will come over the stick, and then stretch way out to the other side. That way you don't mix your cordage up when you're starting to do it. Then I simply take that standing end and go back itself through the loop that I just made. And again, there's our clove hitch. Again, most of these knots that we're doing are bushcrafting knots. They're not to tie canoes to your car. They're not to, you know, do heavy duty work. There are specialized knots for those and I would suggest if you had to do something specialized that you would look up what knot is good for the application that you're using. Now, the next knot that I want to do, and this is very similar to a, uh, to a clove hitch that we just did, this knot is called a constrictor knot and this is especially good to whip ends of ropes that we're going to show you in just a few minutes or to tie bags closed but you can also use it on the stick. In order to do that what I do is start off backwards from what I was doing. If you remember we threw the loop with the standing end out. This on top. This time we're going to throw the standing end underneath. Then I'm simply going to come under grab his tag end and you can see a figure eight. Maybe you can see that, the figure eight in the knot. I need three hands to do this for you. Throw that under the standing end. Okay, so remember the standing end goes under here. We reach under and put that tag right across the center. Then we simply fold this knot in half toward us. Now this is the way to throw this knot. It's uh, pretty easy. That's called a constrictor. And I'm going to tie this freehand for you as well so that you can see it. Uh, the constrictor knot again is very useful for doing things like tying bags closed. Well, let me show you how to throw it if you're just doing it over your cordage. We start off exactly the same as we did with the clove hitch. In fact, you can see this is our clove hitch. But what we're going to do is on this first loop that we made, we're going to go around and back through that loop. 
and there you have your constrictor knot. I've got a piece of rope here and the rope is frayed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this constrictor knot just like that. Fold it over. Again you can do that in slow motion on the camera or on your video if you want step by step. And I'm going to put these through the tag end of this rope. Now this rope as you can see is pretty badly frayed. If I put that constrictor on pull it tight that can actually be used as a temporary whipping. One of the nice things about it is once I tighten that down that's not going to come loose again. That's real tight. It'll stop my rope from fraying for me and that's a good way to whip in a real emergency. Another thing that I can do along the same line and I will tie that again. I'm going to tie it just a little bigger to fit around this this time. Again we go the standing end under. We pull the tag end back and wrap that toward us. Now this is just a little bag that I use for my bow drills and hand drill sets. Piece of denim leg material that I cut off. I'm going to go ahead and put that knot right through there. Pull that tight and you can see now there's my knot, the constrictor and that won't come loose. That's going to stay tight in there and it's going to hold that bag shut for me. Good application for I want to do that. one more bonus knot for you as we finish up this series simply because a viewer requested it. We showed the bowline the other day and he said can you tie a one-handed bowline it could save your life. And he's absolutely right. I highly recommend that as you practice this that you practice it left-handed and right-handed. I'm going to do it right-handed for you today because I'm left-handed and that will show you it's ambidextrous. But what I do is suppose that I've fallen off a cliff. I've broken my arm and I need to be tied off in order to get rescued out of that cliff. They throw a rope down to me and what I've done is thrown this rope. Now I'm going to put this hand in my pocket so I only do it one-handed. What I'm going to do is I'm holding the tag in in my hand. I put my hand over the rope and step toward making my loop. You remember that the rabbit comes up out of the loop. Now, I hold this tag end in my hand and I come up around and the rope comes with me. So the, 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 the rabbit has come out of the hole. Now I go around the log without dropping it. Go around the log and grab it. So it's just manipulation of your fingers. Then just step backwards and pull tight. And as I pull tight, that forms into the bowline. If I have to, I can tie a one-handed half hitch off here and that will make sure that that thing stays in there nice and tight. I'll do that again for you because it's an easy, easy knot, but uh, you got to make sure you get it right. And I especially want you to see, and I have to have my other hand to untie it. That's okay because they'd untie it for me up there. I could use my mouth, I suppose. Okay, I have my standing, or the free end in my hand. The standing end goes back to the party. Put my hand over the rope, curl it back up. That forms my loop. You can see the loop here under my hand. Then I simply manipulate the rope around the standing line, draw it back through, and pull tight. And there you have your bowline, one-handed. A good knot to know and a good way to learn it. So learn how to do these knots. Practice with them. Work them over and over. I used to sit at Burger King and do knots for hours and people would just walk by looking in amazement and some would chuckle, that's okay, because then I get out the Burger King napkins and make cordage out of them. And then they laugh even more. This is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. We hope you've enjoyed this series on knots. Hope that you have a great time working with them and try them out again. I can't impart the skills to you unless you get out and get into the bush and practice them. Until we see you on the next video, have a great day.